He makes it easy. This is an easy answer, Simon. Which one loves him more? And Simon says, I, I like his answer here, I suppose, <laughs> seems like he's unwilling to fully admit the answer here. I suppose that he to whom he forgave most, Jesus said, you're right. You, you got a brain on you. You're able to discern some things, Simon. You're, you're figured it out. And then this is what, what some scholars call a, a uh, direct um, uh, a direct parable, or a double indirect parable, they call it. I mean, meaning, Simon is put in a place where he is forced to put himself in the shoes of the debtor. Because Jesus talks about two debtors, and he has two people he compares it to, and he talks about this woman who has been forgiven most, Simon is forced to put himself, I mean, if, a guy, if, if, if you're going to tell me this story, and then he says, this woman is the other one, and I'm talking to you, Simon, it's impossible for Simon to escape and say, well, who was the other debtor? Who's the other one that owes a debt? It's impossible for him to say that. This is a direct parable. It makes Simon come to a place where he must make a decision. He must decide how he's going to react to the debt. Now, I find it very amazing about this parable. Simon put on an elaborate show for Christ. He put on an elaborate show, didn't he? The feast, all these things. But this woman simply adored him and gave him the genuine sacrifices of worship. He applies the parable in vivid terms. <coughs> she has been forgiven not because she cried or wiped his feet or kissed him. Jesus makes it clear for all to hear, thy sins are forgiven thee, thy faith hath saved thee. Now she can go with the peace of God. You see, what it was that saved this woman from her sins was not the zeal of her heart. It was not the emotion of the tears. It was her faith that demonstrated itself in emotion. It was the faith that saved her. Her belief that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is who He says He is. He is the God of the Old Testament. And He is the God of the New Testament. And by faith in Jesus Christ alone, by His death which would come. It's interesting to me that the women were the ones who seemed to always see the death of Christ. They are able to see a little clearer than the men here. She, what she saw in the person of Jesus, she realized, only this man can save me, a known sinner. Only this man can forgive me. And so she went to him, desiring by her faith, because she believed that he could, that he would save her. And he did. That's one of the best parts about this, isn't it? He did. He didn't say, no, your sins are too much. You see, Simon, he, he's got a lot more on the ball than you do. He attends church, temple worship at that day. He does the rituals necessary in the Jewish religion. He had me over for dinner. You've never had me over for dinner. All that stuff did not matter. She had faith. Paul told the Philippian jailer when he was asked, when, when, when he asked, the Philippian jailer asked Paul, what must I do to be saved? He told the Philippian jailer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Man, the simplicity of Jesus Christ in his words. The simplicity found right here, right? He just looks at her and says, your sins are forgiven, your faith saved you. You see the contrast he is drawing here with the two debtors? It's almost as if he is asking Simon, Simon, you have not been forgiven, and I know you have not been forgiven because you have no love. This woman has loved much. And this is how he contrasts, and he says it this way, Simon, I came to your house. You gave me no water for my feet. What love is that? Simon, I came into your house. You gave me no kiss. What love is that? 
Simon, I came into your house and you didn't anoint me with oil. What love is that? But since I have come into your house, this known sinner of a woman, she has watered my feet with her tears. She has kissed my feet and she has anointed my feet. The contrast here is not that this woman was forgiven because she loved, but rather because she was forgiven, she loved much. I want to say this morning, this is not mean that we go out in sin that grace may abound. Because I would, I would contend to say that the woman and Simon were equal sinners. James says, if we've offended in one point, we're guilty of all the law. Jesus made it very clear to the Pharisees. He said, you say not to commit adultery. I say, if a man looks on a woman to lust after he's committed adultery already in his heart. You say, thou shalt not murder. It has been said, thou shalt not murder. I say, if you hate your brother without a cause, you're guilty of murder. Jesus made it very clear that sin is sin. Sins of the heart and sins of the flesh are sins. And I would contend that this woman had not sinned greater than Simon had sinned. But I will contend this. She recognized her sin as greater than Simon did. She recognized her sin as greater. My friends, if we are going to discover the grace of God, the first thing we must understand is that we are great sinners. We must not be like Simon. We must not be like Simon and think we're not that bad. We must be like this woman and recognize that our sins do not even allow us to touch the face of God. They do not allow us to touch the face of Jesus. I cannot but, I, I must but sit at his feet. I'm not even welcome at the same table. We must understand that our sins have separated us from God. Romans says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have all fallen short, missed the mark on what God desires. I stand in front of you today a great sinner. Becoming pastor does not change my sin. We are great sinners before we can even understand or discover the grace of God, as he says in James, that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. We must understand we are sinners like this woman. We are in desperate need of a Savior because the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But we must also recognize like this woman, there is an answer to our sin. There is forgiveness for our sin. You ever think of that? One time I was talking to a, a young lady <clears throat> about Jesus Christ and she said to me when I asked her, would you like to accept Jesus as your Savior? She said, he'll never forgive me for the things I've done. I, I, I felt sad that I went away from that home <clears throat> with her still believing that. But that's faith. We must believe that His grace will cover our sin. There is no sin that the grace of God cannot cover. There is no sin that the grace of God cannot cover. We must recognize like this woman, I don't know all she understood, but she knew she had to find a problem for a solution for her problem of sin. And she knew, I got to go to Jesus. I gotta go to Jesus. Maybe you're here today and you're like this woman and you've not been at the feet of Jesus. You've not turned from your sin and trusted only in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. This is for you. God's grace is for you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be saved. You will be forgiven. And her sin, her debt that she owed to God, 
was completely forgiven.